Good evening, beloved. Welcome to the Wednesday Bible study. Uh, for those uh, who see us online, who follow us online, uh, write to us, find us on Facebook at Beloved Sons of God. That's our handle. And uh, we'll tell you where we fellowship so you can come and gather and be, be one with all the other sons in the city if you live in Bombay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so today I have a very simple word. This whole week we've been doing on not worrying. Okay. So I want to add to that, not worrying. We've taken two Sundays. Um, for those who are hearing us online, here are our last two uh, messages on take no thought. Uh, the word for cares in the Bible, uh, God calls it thoughts. You know, and when he says take no cares, he's literally saying don't take any thoughts. And so in my last, in the part two, I share about God is all about position. If you read the new covenant, and when I say new covenant, I don't mean the gospels. Okay, the gospels talks about where Jesus was still on the earth. But then after he rose again, even the, in, um, it's written in the new covenant that we don't go after Jesus in the flesh anymore, even though we've seen him in the flesh. Okay, so God wants us, uh, imagine the rest that we have is that while we were sinners, the father sent his son and his son bore every load, bore that load, that heavy yoke. That's why it says today my yoke is easy and my burden is light is because it's, it's a rest. Okay, and so Jesus bore the load so that you don't have to bear the load. And what the devil does sometimes is give you stuff. And that's why when anytime you feel like a, you know, like a, like a weight, it's not from him. Okay, and sometimes rest does feel like a weight. And that's different. I'm going to talk about it today. Okay, but I don't mistake it for, uh, for the devil's weight. Okay, so that, that's why the Bible talks about laboring to rest laboring to not worry, laboring to not fight when everything around you is telling you to fight. Okay. We talked about how I, I spoke from James, right? I told you it talks about two kinds of man. So it says the natural, the one who's born from above. Okay. The, the, this, this man, he looks into the mirror, he sees his face. Okay. And then he goes away and forgets what manner of man he is. That means this is somebody who gets born again. Okay. But he looks into the mirror. That is the word of God. He knows who he is. He knows where his origin from. He looks at his natural face. I told you that word natural in, in uh, Greek is translated as Genesis. It means where he originates from. His source. That means you and I are sons of God, right? And so God wants us to know that we come from above. Born again. And so why does this man get defeated? Is because he sees his natural face in the mirror. But when he's faced with a problem, he forgets. But the one who is a doer of the word is when he sees what kind of manner he is, like he's a son of God, what is his position, that everything is under his feet. And now when he's faced with any problems, all he does is just doesn't forget that it's all under his feet. And then it says that this man will be blessed in what he does. So the whole new covenant, when you read, uh, you know, if you're hearing, read uh, Romans, Acts onwards, Acts, Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, this is all where you'll find, these are the books written after the cross. Where remember when Jesus said that I have much things to tell you, but you can't even bear to hear them now. Then he told them, you know, of earthly things I've told you and you don't believe. How will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? And think about it. He chose somebody like Paul who didn't even hang out with him. Because all the other disciples saw him in the flesh. And he did not want you and me to now know him even in the flesh. Because Jesus came to fulfill the law. Right? So a lot of things sometimes in the gospels that he's addressing to is... He's addressing to because he's keeping the law. He's addressing to Pharisees. He's addressing to a certain group of people. But now as sons, our identity is all in. If you read Romans, Galatians, meditate on these books. And when we read all of them, all you'll find is a positional truth. A positional truth. You read Ephesians, it's a positional truth. You read Colossians, it's a positional truth. And so the way we fight is by knowing your position. That means not forgetting it's all under your feet. Now today I'm going to take a simple verse. And I'm going to read this and I want you to meditate on this. Okay, now let's read that verse. It's, it's, it's about three times in the new, new covenant, but I read it from Hebrews. It's mentioned in, it's mentioned in Acts, it's mentioned in uh, Corinthians, but I'm going to read it from Hebrews. Okay, now look at this. This is 1 Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13. Okay. Okay. But to which of his angels has he ever said, 
sit at my right hand, that means this is not about angel, this is for you, right? Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool, your footstool. Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Okay, so who is, who is he telling to sit? After Jesus rose again, he sat at the right hand. Now God says in Ephesians, and we'll read that, that we were raised together because the whole cross, don't forget that when you look at Jesus, it's not him going, it's you going. It's because he went on your behalf. He is identification. So if you don't see yourself as you going to the cross and dying with him, then the cross is not going to be alive in your life. That's why it's identification. That's why it says that you died. It's all Christ in you. And someone can't reason with that because they just see as Jesus going and dying. But then it says that you died. And so in Romans, when it says that, don't you know that when, you, when he was buried, you were buried. When he rose again, you rose again. So now when he rose again, guess what? He raises, he, he rises again. And then it says that God puts him, he's seated at the right hand. So do you know where you and I get born again? In a seated position. And all your life, everything, all the trials that come to you, try to make you feel like it's not seated. It's not done. And try to get you to run after the very things that are already under our feet. And that's why the labor is to really maintain or sit in that place of rest. That's why he's saying, sit at your right hand. Sit at my right hand till I... Make your enemies your footstool. So now I'm going to read the same verse in Hebrews, okay, in Greek, and see how it translates in Greek, okay? This is beautiful. Okay. Now I'm just taking absolutely the way it's written in Greek. To which now of the angels did he say ever, sit at the right hand of me until I make place, until I may place the enemies of you as a footstool for the feet of you, until I may place the enemies of you as a footstool for the feet of you. So do you know what a footstool is? So some people say, yeah, the footstool is to put your feet, right? Like on, uh, on your, your feet, under your feet. But the footstool was actually like a, like a phrase. And it is a phrase given when, when you conquered your enemy. That means the king, the conquered king, he would put his foot on the neck of the enemy. So now when he's saying, sit still, sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies, your footstool, this was only a position given to a conquered king. That's why we have, we've already, in Jesus has already conquered everything on our behalf. And even as we're sitting, he's saying that this thing is already defeated. And how can he bring it under your feet until you are rested? But if you're fighting for the very thing that is finished, then he can't bring it under your feet. That's why how do you win all the battles in your life? It's very important to guard your rest. Your rest. And what is the, and where is the rest? It's a head rest. It's a head rest. Because way before you see the problems outside, they first attack your mind. And mind and worrying and everything. And that's why the first thing the Bible talks about is taking the thought captive. Because first it begins from here. And so you win it even by if you just have a head rest. That you don't run after the problems. So I will make your enemies your footstool. Okay, now I'm going to read from Greek the, the footstool, the definitions of footstool, okay, for you. Hear this, and it's so beautiful. Okay, so footstool, okay, when you go deeper, it literally means under the feet. A footstool is a footstool used by a conquering king to place his foot on the neck of the conquered, those under his total dominion, those under his total dominion. I told you when Jesus, you know, the mystery, it says, I think it's an Acts, okay? Or it's in the New Covenant somewhere. It says that the devil would have never crucified Christ 
okay if he knew that after he rose again suddenly there was going to be multiplication he did not understand the mystery because now all that the devil sees in the spiritual realm you and the lord are one spirit so he can he just sees christ but the way he can discern is by your very nature i told you christ is not running he's still he's composed he's in a place of rest and so even as you rest someone can see who is the son in his position that's why you know when when the demon came and said paul i know this guy i know but who are you how can they tell someone who know if you know your position all you will do is become more still and more still and more still in an area like in in health i'm very still and where is that stillness starts from it first starts from my head i don't entertain things i don't even run after a thought like i won't because it's not in my nature and so i won't even say some things and then because i believe it then what i speak and what i do automatically follow my belief system people have it the other way around they think you need to confess but first you believe in your heart and then confession comes with your mouth so sometimes i always say take a few days out just to see where your heart is do you really believe this truth or are you really wrestling with it and believing is not a feeling or an emotion believing is a decision it's as simple as that you either decide or you don't so believe is not like oh i don't i don't no 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 it, it just is as simple as a light on or a light off believing is a decision and so you choose to believe that yeah i'm a son i i'm born from above and in all your problems even as you're taking that seated position because christ is seated and you're in him so what does it mean to be seated not a physical position it's a um, it's it's a it's a position of rest that means it's a mind position that in everything you're not allowing yourself to get worried right you're casting down those thoughts you're pulling down you're choosing you're laboring to rest that it is finished and even as you're taking on that position by not running after that problem guess now what's happening he is saying that i am going to give you total dominion over this problem it's going to be under your feet then who is going to put it under his feet the father is okay now read this okay so it means those under his total dominion that's what footstool means so he is saying till i make your enemies your footstool i'm going to give you total dominion over this okay now uh, let me read you thayer's thayer's uh, meaning okay of footstool to make one the footstool of one's feet that is to subject to reduce under one's power okay taken from the practice of conquerors who place their feet on the neck of their conquered enemies okay i'll just read a few more okay i think that's the last one okay so this it's a phrase when he's saying till i make your enemies your footstool that means i am going to defeat them i've already done it and i am putting them all under your feet okay so now let's read let's read 1 corinthians 15 verse 20 Okay, one Corinthians fifteen verse twenty. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, that is Adam. Okay, by man also came the resurrection of death. So I told you the second Adam, that is Jesus. Okay, came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ. all shall be made alive okay but each one in his own order christ the first fruits afterwards those who are christ at his coming then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of god the father when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power for he must reign see this till he has put all enemies under his feet the last enemy that will be destroyed is death for he has put all things under his feet again god is repeating the same thing but when he says all things are put under him it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted now when all things are made subject to him then the son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him that god may be all in all at my right hand till i make your enemies okay your footstool 
okay the word sit sit means to dwell to reside to remain to live permanently in this place of rest that means i am everything that i'm doing i am going to see that i'm not going to plunk myself out of position that's why your whole fighting has to do with position if you understand and if you could give 2 minutes in any problem that you're in and you don't see yourself as adam like in my last message that i told you you're not from the, you're not from adam you're from the sec, second adam you're from christ who came from above and we belong to him now we are from heavenly we are the heavenly man not the natural man and so if you take two two minutes out to just process first from where you come from and then to see your position in that situation you will fight very differently and your fighting will not be fighting but it will be a position of rest you'll actually end up becoming more still and not doing because you'll realize that one second if i'm seated with christ and if the bible says that all principalities and power and might and everything is under my feet and i'm going to read that verse now and he's calling footstool footstool means it's a conquered enemy it's not just a table for my feet to keep on it means something it means it's only a footstool when something has been conquered that means i have total dominion over it so i i'm putting my foot on its neck that's what it means and so that means who is doing it my father is doing it and he can only do it if i am seated will you rest and only then can i put them under your feet that means about this area i'm not going to just give and get out and like get all anxious and everything no 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 i'm resting is because i'm father that this area of my life is already finished right that's the helmet of salvation now let's read that i'm going to read two verses of position again okay let's read ephesians and then we're going to read colossians same verses in ephesians um uh, yes i love this okay okay i'm on verse 50 therefore i also after i heard of your faith in the lord jesus and your love for all the saints do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power now see this which he worked in christ now he talks about position when he raised him which he worked in christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places now see this far above all principality and power and might and dominion remember it said total dominion footstool is total dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come that means corona or any other names you know there's a people get defeated because they don't know where their position is and so you you can have a, a generation of church that is fighting and they get hit and they are fighting and fighting but they like, it's like they're fighting from second heaven and so there you are getting hit but if you know you're in third that you're seated at the right hand position then you're not fighting you're resting that's the place where everything is under your feet that's why i told you we we fivefold ministry is great but as a son it's from a place of position if you know you're a son you're not running to prophets you'll have all the all the gifts working in you but they are not telling me who i am as i'm a son of god and through my position trust me the spiritual realm knows you're a son if there's anyone who knows it it's the devil because the devil went on saying you are the son of god you are the son of god he was he was looking at jesus when jesus came i know who you are why have you come to torment me every demon that met jesus jesus didn't have to prove he is a son they knew him because he's born a son you don't have to prove and similarly you and i are born from above we don't have to prove squat you
you don't have to wake up every day and say i'm a son i'm a son and if you don't say i'm a son you stop being a son it doesn't work like that you have to know you're a son he knows you're a son you know how he comes to know how we people get defeated is because they they don't act like sons as in they are a son but they begin to run after the very problems and so imagine a conquered king running after get being chased by an enemy he is like this king doesn't know that he's conquered it all it's like an amnesia so the 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 spiritual realm knows who you are and the more still you are trust me the more still you are the more dominion you'll have is because you can only be still when you know that everything is under your feet that you don't need to fight you learn to rest you're guarding more and more of your rest and even as you're resting more and more all your enemies are becoming your footstool because he is making it i've seen it rest is the holiest thing you can do is rest rest is a place where all promises are yes and amen so everything tell you, tells you to come out of the rest come on let's fight this let's win this battle and that's where you're saying there's no battle to be fought because if there was any fighting it was about death right and jesus did it on our behalf it says in hebrews that he destroyed he partook flesh and blood he became humanity so that he could go on the cross and set us free who were always in the fear of death and bondage to death so if he destroyed it for us the power who had death that is satan now what more fighting do you and i have to do and that's why even as you guard your rest and that's the labor the labor is really to not fight and then you get thought saying that you're being irresponsible by not worrying about the situation right because in the world it means like today i was with my mom at a doctors and he said you uh, you know it's natural for your children to worry i said no no but i don't worry about my mother i really don't i don't worry to the world it might look like oh she is an irresponsible daughter she doesn't worry but i i choose not to because i'm in covenant psalm 91 is my yes and amen it's in my nature that no evil will touch my loved ones and so even as he gave her a good report but i didn't need a good report i said i choose not to worry is because he is taken care of. my faith is in him and the more you are rested the less you will worry and worry is a choice trust me that's why it says humble yourself and god gives grace to the humble and then it says cast all your cares cast all your thoughts on him because he thinks for you and so i'm humbling myself by not worrying and every time i have a worry that comes into my mind guess what i say i'm i'm not going to worry take no thought i say because i'm father because that's the solution for it it says we don't worry the gentiles worry but you don't need to worry is because you have a heavenly father do you know that the very things you're running after they're supposed to be added to you that's the way the kingdom works and how are they added to you i don't run after the things i'm not supposed to they are meant to be added to me seek first the kingdom and his righteousness that means who i am i am the righteousness of god in christ that is your definition and all these things will be added added to you so the very things you want the materialistic things you don't get them by pursuing the things you get them by by knowing your position and the more you are seeking your position you're finding out your position all you will do is in every area you land up resting more you land up becoming more still more still more still more composed less less all over the place you're just becoming more still and even by your position the spiritual realm knows that this person just used to be all over the place but now has become so still and now the spiritual realm bows down to you because they know that man this person knows there is sun they're not running anymore they they take the position so now you don't look like any, any other different than christ the greater one you get it even as he seated you are seated and so our position when you got born again became began in seated that means permanently dwell now guess what when it says psalm 91 Okay, let's. I'm just going to quickly just take that Psalm 91. He who makes the Lord, the Most High, your dwelling place, right? He who dwells, rests, sits. It's translated as seated position. He who sits in the secret place of the Most High. 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. All of these promises is a place of rest. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. It begins with he who dwells. The same thing as sit at my right hand, meaning dwell at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, and then all of these amazing promises coming to you, that no evil shall touch even your loved ones, nothing shall come even near your dwelling. You will look to your right and your left, but it will not come near you. That is our position as a son. Okay? It's in Christ. That's our dwelling. And everywhere you're going, by your very posture, and a headdress, by your mind rest, you're walking in dominion. That's why it says, be still, be still, and know that I am God. But where is God today? Where is Christ? He's in you. The more you're realizing that, what will happen? You'll end up being still. Being still. And even as you're being still, everything is coming under your feet. You choose not to worry. Worry is a choice. Okay? Let's look at, uh, let's look at Colossians. Yes. See this powerful truth here, okay? For this reason, I'm on Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Now see this, again he talks about position. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. And conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. That means from one realm, you came to another realm. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible. He is the image of the invisible God. Who is the image? Who is the image of the invisible God? Jesus is. If you want any more clarity on what the father is like, just look at Jesus. I understand there's Moses and there's everyone in the Bible, but when it talks in the Bible, he is the image of the invisible God. It's talking about Christ. Jesus went about healing everybody, not some, all. That's his perfect will. Look at this. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. He's the firstborn over all creation. Everything was created except you and me. You and I were born again, born from above. You were born. Okay? He is the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. You know, even the devil was created and he was supposed to serve. He went into rebellion. But trust me, through the cross, creation creator will always be greater than creation no matter what is coming your way and you are one with the creator that means whatever it is will always be you will always be greater than it that's why you know jesus was sleeping in the storm because if he got up in the storm that means the, the storm is greater than who he is that's why the more you you realize who you are you'll just end up sleeping more and what is sleeping it's not physically sleeping it's a posture of rest it won't disturb you anymore before things would disturb me in areas of health. But the, the, when I started conquering it, then it just didn't matter to me. It's not even an area of, of topic or conversations with me anymore. You still, you just end up becoming more still, more still in that area because it's under your feet. Because every time I'm reminded, my foot is on the neck 
of the defeated. That means all death is under my feet. Receive this right now vision. See yourself seated at the right hand of the father and see your very leg, your foot on the devil, on his neck that is defeated or on the problem that is under your feet right now because that's what the footstool means. It's you have absolute, he's telling you that you have absolute dominion over that very thing. Under your feet. That's what it means. And you know how you can show that you have absolute dominion over it? Stop worrying about it. Don't worry. You know, I, I told you this once. I had a dream in which uh, God showed me. Uh, I saw that everyone was running after this thief in the dream. And then I was told, don't run after it. And that he's getting, he loves the attention. And the way he's getting stronger and stronger is because people are running after it. And then this verse was given to me from Proverbs that says, evil flees when you stop pursuing him. The devil flees when you stop pursuing him. How, is, uh, how are you pursuing him? He'll give you a care and you start running after it. What is it? You start Googling it and then you start seeing things and oh, all of these things. You're giving him a lot of attention. And that means you're worshipping him because you're giving him so much attention. And you choose not to. And I see Jesus not worrying after everything. He, he, he hears something. He doesn't run after it in his thoughts. He just doing and doing other things. Even when he heard John the Baptist was beheaded, everything came to him to get like emotionally grieved, right? Like sometimes it can come and say, that's why I, I, I said it looks very spiritual, but sometimes just giving, doing this to somebody is not, not what God wants also, okay? It's the, the devil plays on emotions. What did Jesus do when he heard that John the Baptist was beheaded? He just praised him. And now this guy is beheaded. And Jesus goes, it says, in that very moment he went and began to heal heal people. He did exactly the opposite because everything came to grab and then he chooses to walk away from it. We don't run after even emotions. We don't play. Like I know sometimes, you know, things come and the devil always works in the I. He won't say you. Oh, I am feeling lazy. I am feeling low today. I and So you take those thoughts and you make them your own. No, they're not your thoughts just because they come in the eye. That's why you pull them down. No, I choose not to let my emotions even tell me. I walk away from it. And even as I walk away from them, I'm not getting snared by them. Now you're taking the position. That's why what happened when, before he was raising that little girl that came. And then this lady comes in his way for the issue of blood, right? Now this, this guy has come first, like, oh, please come and pray for my daughter or whoever was sick at his home. And now Jesus is going and then suddenly this lady with the issue of blood comes. And so now maybe he's taken more time, right? Because now Jesus wants to know who came and received healing from me. Because this lady said in her heart, if only I touch his garment, I'm going to get well. And so she, and then she gets healed. And now Jesus is looking, who touched me, who touched me? And everyone is like, Are, but everyone thronged you. And how are you saying? Because this person came and just took something. And then even as Jesus tells her, oh, don't worry, your faith has made you now go in peace. Your faith has made you whole. Now as he's going, they come and say, don't bother to get Jesus. Your daughter is dead. And guess what he says? Don't be afraid. Don't fear. Only believe. And he's telling this person, don't get stressed. Don't just rest. And you can see Jesus. He's not running. He's just a son. But listen, that same Jesus is not the only Jesus now. You and I, he's the firstborn of many brethren. That's what the Bible says. And so you, when you look at the gospels, you're not looking at him. You're looking at you now because you're one spirit with him. And so even as Jesus reacts, that should be your posture of stillness, of calmness in anything that any problem that comes, comes your way. And even as you're holding that position, you will see all things coming under your feet. And it's not under your feet. I told you, it's like it, it's at his neck. And he's saying, sit at my right hand. That means take your position. Till I make your enemy your footstool. Your footstool. That can only happen through a position when you know that this has been fought. Yeah, I'm a son. And even as I rest in this matter, I have full trust that my father is making this very problem my footstool. He's conquering it for me because it's already been conquered. It's a position of rest. Otherwise, you'd be standing. And fighting. Rest means what? You know when you sit on a chair, the weight is on you or the weight is on the chair? 
The weight is on the chair. It's a position of rest. And what is the rest? We are seated where? On the chair? It says we're seated in Christ. So who's your chair? Who's your rest? Christ. And so why are you taking the load? The load is on him. And will you allow yourself to rest? That means seated in Christ. So the weight is on him. And even as you're resting in him, the father is making that very problem your footstool, conquering it for you. Let me read ahead in Colossians. Okay, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth. I'm on Colossians 1 verse 16. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. It means he's the first. He's the first of the first of the first. He is before all things. Do you know what the word alpha means? I looked it up in Greek. Alpha means the father. How beautiful is that? Alpha means the father. How beautiful is that? He is the first. He is before all things. So when he says, I am the alpha and the omega, he's telling you, I'm your father. That's what he's saying. I've got the last say in this. I've got the first say in this. The father has the say in this. It's not the world. The father has the say. Okay. He is, the, he is before all things. And in him, and in him, all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things, he may have the preeminence. It means that in all things, he may have the first position. In all things. You know, I'm not kidding, okay? Every time I take the word, all it does, it rests me more. So the doing part that I learn is actually resting. And resting is because the anxiety leaves. Because all anxiousness comes, right? In any area, it's just anxiety coming in. And then his solution, he tells you, don't take the anxiety, don't take the thought. And why is he telling you don't take the thought? Because don't you realize that you are fathered? Gentiles act like this, but not who are fathered. And because you are fathered, now, so I know that, okay, take no thought. I, I say I'm father. I don't take it. And you know now why I don't take it also is because I'm not just father. I'm not a human who's father. I'm a son who's father, right? And everything, just like Christ, is a finished work. It's under my feet. And so the very problem that's coming to, to engage me is coming like a lie telling me to run after it. And the way I fight it is by not allowing to, not pursuing the problem. I rest, I'm seated. And my seated position is an honor to the father because the Sabbath is the holiest thing you can do. It's a rest. You're choosing out of choice. I'm saying, you know what? Everything is telling me to worry about this and I choose not to because father, you said it. You said, cast your care because you care for me. You love me because this area of my life is finished a helmet of salvation. And so I'm just going to blindly do what you told me. You told me, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, just tell you what I want. And so I'm not taking any thoughts. I'm not worrying about this. This is what I would like. And now the peace of God is just surpass, surpasses everything is guarding my heart and my mind. We choose not to worry. And our choice is like a sweet smell, smell, smelling aroma to the father because you're honoring the son. You're honoring your position as a son. And in that, sit at my right hand, right? You're taking a position of seated. I am making, now watch, watch what I do for you. I am making your enemies your footstool. I'm bringing them under your feet. Okay? Your rest is the holiest thing you'll ever do. Trust me, always guard your rest. Everything tells you, just because the world, I told you, is doing certain things and it looks spiritual, may not be effective. But your rest is the most effective thing that you will do. I'm going to share this testimony on a Sunday. There was a lady that came this Sunday and shared an amazing testimony with me. She, she's been hearing us since, I think I, uh, I met her in, uh, in October sometime, uh, online, I think, if I'm not mistaken. October or November, I'm not too sure. And then she, she, she told me, she went to the doctor, the doctor diagnosed her with a lump. She goes and tests in, uh, 
to the, you know, she goes to the doc, uh, whatever, she went to the clinic or whatever, and they told her that there are eight cysts in her breasts, eight cysts in her breast. She goes home, she doesn't pick up the phone and call anybody. She simply sits and takes the word. And this lady just goes over the word and guess what she reads? And she tells me, Priya, it wasn't even a healing word. And that's what I mean. You know, I got born again or I'm a new creation. It doesn't have to be, but in your own intimacy with him, I told you, you will take down any giant. This lady goes and sits and all she needs from Ephesians is that your father and my father is the same father. Okay, what is the verse? Let me just see if I can get that. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Okay? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And she was like, he is the same Father. I have the same Father as Jesus. Jesus is Father and me are one. And so she is like, okay, so then Jesus, is, Jesus doesn't have anything in his body, neither do I have. The Father has perfect ease. He's one with Jesus, so is he one with me. He's taking care of Jesus so perfectly, he's, he's with me as well. That's all, she was just meditating on her own and she's like, Jesus, I'm not going to worry about this. And then she goes for her test and all the eight come benign. And so she came to share the testimony. She was sharing the testimony in church as well, okay, the Sunday. But what I'm saying is this lady has her own personal relationship when faced with a problem that the whole world would have thought like you have to fight, right? What did she not forget? She did not forget her position. And she came, took that lovely place of that first place to go to the father first. And she's sitting and she may not know many things. And I know that she does, but it's my, my point is when you go to him first, she's sitting with him and now she takes the word and chooses to stand and she's like, you know what, this is who I am. And I'm going to rest in this. And she's like, I'm going for this test. And I trust that this is, this is who I am. And she goes and she gets an all clear report. Now, there wasn't much clapping and like 100 people telling, oh, God. You know why? Who, who has become stronger today? She. And who has become more intimate today? She. is because she went to him first. How will your own relationship become strong and how will you like David get those nuggets in your little sack if you don't go to him first? If you go to everybody, then it will be everybody prayed and so everybody. And so tomorrow when you're again hit, your, your faith is more in community than in him. So there are a lot of people, but they have no personal relationship. They don't know him. And so they, they, they constantly need, need of, of a support system and church is not a support system. That's where you went wrong. That's where people get defeated. It's not, it was not meant to be a support system. Your foundation and your support system is only Christ. It says, let no other foundation be built except Jesus Christ. And that foundation, if you're on, nothing will shake you. Okay. And imagine now if everyone has the foundation of Christ, how many testimonies do each of y'all have in your own little pocket? And now when you get together, y'all are sons coming together, not orphans needing a support system. So that's why you're going out and you can be out and in Corona, sons are not affected, but sheep are. You're getting beaten up because you're in need of support system. Support is not there. There's social distancing. But how can only a son will walk out? Because his support was never the people around him. His support was always Christ. Christ is not left. You're in him. Are you understanding? I love the body, but the body has been changed to community. And so we are not substitutes. What did this lady, what a beautiful testimony this is. Eight, eight lumps in her breast. And look at all the things that have gone, could have gone through her mind at that point, right? Not one. I'm praying for eight. What is this? One benign, not benign. Two benign, not benign. What could have gone through her mind? And all the chaos, right? And she's going home and she's like, Priya, I just didn't call nothing. I just plonked. I just opened and I read. And I said, and she said, it's not even a big verse. It's not even those healing, nothing. I just saw, but Jesus, your father is also my father. That's it. And in that, she just saw it. She closed and she's like, in this, this is it. You don't have anything, neither do I. And this girl goes back to that doctor 
and all her eight are benign. Okay, this is what I'm I'm talking about. What sonship is, right? It's sonship, and your biggest a mature son is a very secure son. That's the definition of a mature son. It may not be that they know all the scriptures. It's just that they're so secure. Like David was like a shepherd boy, but God chose him because He knew him. And so your security is when you don't. You're just like that's why it's not about. I don't have. I'm not crazy about people attending church. I'm not. If you know me, I'm not. I'm more interested in people having their own personal relationship with me. And so I'm not about the numbers. If they're more secure and they have it, and they tell me like God's spoken, I I get more excited about that. Because that's all sonship is making you more secure, not as a sheep but as a son. And Jesus said, "I know my father, and my father knows me." And you can say then, "I know my father, and my father knows me." Okay, don't forget your position. You give your position away when you start start doing the prayer requests and all of that. That's how the spiritual realm knows. They they they're reading much, but they don't know. It's in microcosm. It, it's in the small things. You hold your position. You guard. Okay. And trust me, they know you. They bow down to you. Just like Jesus, royalty. We know who royalty is. It's a spiritual truth. You don't have to prove your sonship. You're one with him. The devil fears you, and they tremble. the The way they know it is when you start running, and so guard your rest. Okay. And still in that, like I want to leave you with this. Okay. Your father still bails you out. When Jesus was told to walk on, when told Peter, "Yeah, come walk on water." Yeah, he started walking, and then he started seeing the storm. Right? He's imitating Jesus because as Jesus is at the word, he's he's walking. He looks at the storm. He starts trembling. Now he's not looking like a son. He's drowning. He was still father. He'll still bail you out, even in those very problems that you're not, you know, you're not seeing yourself as a son yet, and you're struggling and everything. And Christ is getting formed in that part of you, and that's okay. The father will still bail you out. Okay. But my point is, maybe you didn't need to go through the drowning if you don't want to go through the drowning. If you don't want to get hit, then learn to just guard your position. Just when you hear something, don't be so impulsive to pick up the phone call. Don't be so impulsive to write a text and to fight back. It it works on your senses, right? Everything comes to like react, and the less reactory you are, the more in a calm and collected you are. All things are bowing down to the sun, and so your Your job and my job is to actually be still. When everything is telling me to react, oh, it's such a labor to rest, right? It's such a labor to not send that prayer request out because oh, because the misconception is if more people pray, it's stronger. It's a lie. Doesn't mean that at all. Okay, that's a lie. That means as if the problem is bigger. No, if one son who knows he's a son, even conceives it in his heart, thought is enough to take it down. That's the truth. Okay, and that's what it is. Eight, eight, eight lumps going benign, or not being anything. That's that's powerful. In her place of rest, in stillness, and I've seen amazing. I've always heard amazing testimonies when it's just between him and Christ, and they kept it there. And it's not about just being right. And I'm not telling you about oh, just hold all your problems. No, no, it's it's a place of intimacy, and you're going there, and then you're dealing, and you're you're quieting it, and then you're looking at that, and you're seeing your position. You're reminding yourself where you come from. That's what she did. she did all of those things that i'm telling you but it, it happened in a few that's what i mean it's so it's so unconscious right and all she's seeing is she knows where she's coming from and this person is blessed in what he does james who does not forget what manner of man he is she saw the fruit and what was the fruit it's already under her feet because her 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 foot is on the footstool is on the whatever that is the neck Are you understanding? These are spiritual truths. You guard your rest; things will bow down. That's why don't worry. Worry is a choice. It tells you to pull down. God wouldn't tell you to pull down something He thought it's you're not able to pull down those thoughts. It's a choice. You block it out. And now you're saying, "I'm honoring you by not worrying because I'm fathered. I'm not an orphan, and I choose to rest in this area because it is finished." Either He'll give you clarity, or that very problem will bow down to you. Okay. For some, it might be wisdom to go and talk to someone, write an email, call a. call somebody or uh, you know for uh, for a job or anything for another situation it might be different and for maybe in some situations like hers it was just she went for the next test and it was all clear spiritual truths okay these are this is how the kingdom works so sons we all look the same we look like humans but we're not clear distinction between a natural man and a heavenly man we look the same but our origin is not the same 
okay and that's what you need to remember in every problem first take five minutes out to know positionally where you come from who you are and not running but it's already been one for you and even as you learn to rest then taking a few few seconds out few minutes out processing it thinking over it pondering that's what it means to meditate you realize how you react differently to that problem or suddenly wisdom has come and now you are going to get that victory and then you're going to be stronger a matured son and now imagine how strong the body is collectively because there are a bunch of sons hanging up okay and building each other up so let's close in prayer today that was the word i had today um <clears throat> we're going to give a thanksgiving uh for all the increase that he gave you okay for all the life that you got so just say father i thank you that i am a son in your kingdom jesus you are my high priest and right now i give you an offering a thanksgiving for all the increase that you brought to me right now all the life that you've given to me right now oh rahadaraya rahata sho prahadaraya father thank you for the understanding thank you for rest spirit of rest right now just come over and take dominion in our souls in everyone hearing oh rahadala rahata shi prahadara rahata bahadariya rahata Spirit of rest, I thank you, thank you, Jesus, that the very problem is already under your feet. It's under my feet, and even as I rest, Father, I thank you, Father, that you are now working, and all things are being added to us. Thank you, Father. This is the way you work, Father, in us and through us. Thank you for the same.